Congresswoman McBath, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Well, thank you, Trevor. I'm so excited to be with you. And I have to be honest with you. Uh, my youngest sister is your biggest fan. And my family has always said, you know, when are you going to be on a show? Once you're on a show, you've really made it. So wow. thank you for validating me. Wow. With my <laughs> I like how they've got shifted priorities because in my world, becoming a congresswoman uh, and, and living the life that you have lived and how you got there. Many people know of your story, but for those who don't, you started your story from a place that I feel many people should start in politics, and that is a personal place. You were a flight attendant for most of your life. You lost your son to gun violence, and you didn't just mourn his passing. You decided to step up and do something about it, and so you ran to change not just his world, but the world and how America sees guns. So in my world, you have made it. And we, we're gonna talk about all of that today. So thank you so much for, for, for joining us on the show. Um, let's start first talking about Georgia because that's what's really in the news right now. Georgia has become what many people thought it would never, a battleground state. When you look at what has happened in Georgia, do you think that this is Georgia changing or do you think that this is Georgia responding to Donald Trump? Georgia is changing. Uh, Trevor, as I've been seeing for years now, that this is the new South. And I think the resistance that we've seen is just that, the resistance to the New South. And just the amazing movement building that's been done, the strategizing that's been done, the grassroots organizing that's been done. I knew we were gonna be a top tier battleground state. And so I'd been telling people all along, please invest in Georgia. You know, the best is yet to come. And we've, we've shown that. You know, we made President Trump a one-term president, and we've actually been able to be a deciding state for, you know, President-elect uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So, yes, the South is changing, and I'm glad that this peach state has the ability to be um, on the front lines of that. Reading your memoir, I mean, it's inspiring and it's, it's heartbreaking at the same time because you read this tale of a woman who goes through the gripping experience of losing her son your son was shot by a man who felt like his friend was playing the music too loud in the car. That was it. And then try to use stand your ground laws to defend what he had done in taking his life. You then use this, and, and, and that's become part of the title of your book, is Standing Our Ground. What do you think it is about the coalition of mothers that you formed around the country that has moved the idea of gun advocacy forward? Well, as mothers, as women, we're the central focus of our homes oftentimes. We're the protectors. We're, we're often providers. And we want to make sure that when we send our family out the door, when we send our children out the door, that they come home safely. We do everything that we can. And so building this grassroots coalition of mothers and also survivors is really um, indicative of what we need to do, what we'll have to do to make sure that we are providing safe spaces for our children and our families in our own communities. And that's what we've been doing. And, you know, over 90% of the Americans across the country believe in, you know, gun safety legislation, common sense legislation that really will provide safety nets for our families and also making sure that our law-abiding gun owners are using their guns in a way that is um, providing a safety net as well um, right. when they're using those guns. A, a lot of people in your position would have become a single issue candidate. A lot of people in your position would have gone, all I'm here to talk about is guns, but you're actually looking to, to improve health care, to improve gun uh, reform, to improve veterans' health care, you know, and, and then the support that veterans get. And you've really been fighting for a lot of these issues, which, surprisingly, as a Democrat, you've gotten signed by Donald Trump not once, not twice, but three times. So the magic question then is, how have you managed to work laws or create ideas that have gotten a sign-off from Republicans who have shown the ability to block so many different ideas? I've always reached across the aisle to find some common ground with uh, my Republican colleagues that we could work upon. Uh, because when we don't work together, uh, we, we end up in the mess that we've been in, it, in, you know, for so long now, because we've not been working together for the sake of our constituents that are really depending on us in Washington every single day to create value for them. Our constituents all have the same needs and wants, and let's work together to provide the best of what America says they deserve. Representative Jim Clyburn said something interesting, and this was after the results started coming in, 
and it was apparent that Joe Biden had won, but down ballot, Democrats seem to have taken a beating. And he said, there is no denying that defund the police and abolish the police and, and socialism hurt the Democrats' message. As somebody who is elected in a state that is really moderate and very close, how do you communicate some of these ideas? Like, is there, is there a different way that you communicate progressive ideas without isolating um, Republican or moderate voters? I mean, I wish, of course, we'd been able to pick up more seats for the House. But, you know, you have to find what works within your own community. That's what I have said to my uh, colleagues all the time, is that what I say or what I represent to my community might be completely different from another community, right. um, from, another, from another one of my colleagues. I would love, love for us to be able to hold on to some of the seats. Some of my colleagues that came in with me, my freshman colleagues, I was very pained by the fact that, you know, they won't be returning with us. But there again, I think that each of us has been able to um, just really speak very candidly to our own constituents. All of our demographics are different. But as I said, you know, there are a lot of different voices in this caucus and that that's what makes us so unique. I'll be honest, I think that's one of the things that makes you unique is that not only are you a symbol of that, but you articulate it so well to everybody who takes the time to listen. Thank you so much for sharing your story in the book. Thank you so much by, for coming on the show. And thank you to your family who think that I am the thing that means you've made it. I don't agree, but I appreciate them. So thank you so much to your younger sister because between me and her, she's right. She's not right, but between me and her, she's very right. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Trevor. And I just want to say this. Thank you so much for having such a deep conversation with me because it reminds me of all the conversations I used to have at the kitchen table with Jordan. So thank you wow. for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. That means the world to me. Take care. <laughs>